Hi everybody, David Harper here and this is my Antique Stroke Vintage YouTube Game Show. I'm going to give you the chance to test your valuing skills against the expert. So I'm going to show you five different items that have sold in UK auctions recently. I'll give you the descriptions, the pictures and crucially the auctioneer's sale estimate. Then before I reveal how much the item actually sold for, you get 15 seconds thinking time to come up with your own valuation. How much you think the item really sold for. It's as simple as that. I'll post a new episode every Sunday night here on YouTube, 6.30 UK time for the next few weeks and we'll see how it develops. Leave some comments and suggestions. I'm open to that. So if you're ready, get prepared. Let's start with item number one. How much do you think this is worth? Okay, it is a photograph of Neil Armstrong, but not just that, it's signed by the great man himself and dedicated, as you can see, to somebody called Daniel. Now, this was offered through Hanson's Auctions in the UK and it carried an estimate of two to three hundred pounds. Now, do you think that's a lot or is it too cheap? What are your thoughts? Well, let me give you a bit of background information before you get your 15 seconds thinking time. So, Neil Armstrong, the first man on the moon. We recently celebrated the 50th anniversary of the first moon landing. So that's really created a lot of interest in anything NASA related. Armstrong himself, of course, was a worldwide celebrity. The day he walked on the moon until the day he died in 2012. Now, you can assume he probably signed a lot of these NASA photographs, maybe thousands, but he hasn't been signing them since 2012, has he? So they're not making any more. But in your valuation, you've got to bear in mind that there are fakes on the market, all types of fakes when it comes to celebrity autographs. They're just very easy to fake. Well, you've got to know that this one comes with full provenance, so we know it's absolutely genuine. So over to you, estimated at two to three hundred pounds. It's sold, it's gone. You get 15 seconds to come up with your valuation starting now. And welcome back. Right, two to three hundred pound estimate. Neil Armstrong signed photograph sold at Hansen's auctions for six hundred pounds. Double the top estimate. And bear in mind, there's thirty percent or thereabouts in commission to add on. So another couple of hundred quid. So somebody paid eight hundred pounds for that signed autograph. How did you do? Let us know. Make a comment. And if you're ready, let's get into item number two. How much would you pay for this? Right, I think that's actually a really pretty thing. That's my opinion. It's obviously a vase made in the later part of the 19th century by a company called Linthorpe pottery. Now it went into auction at Hawley's just outside Hull. That's Rosie the dog. See you later Rosie. Just outside Hull and it carried an estimate of two to three hundred pounds. Now do you think that sounds expensive or cheap? Now before you make up your mind let me give you a bit of background information. So Linthorpe pottery just outside Middlesbrough in the northeast of England is a great company, very funky, fashionable Art Nouveau designers, and Christopher Dresser was involved. Now, not just as a designer, but he was part of the company. He was a director. The problem with Linthorpe Pottery was this. They made great designs, but they weren't fantastic at doing business. Even though they exhibited in London, America, even in Calcutta, 
They only lasted 12 years. So in 1890, the company went bust. So as a shame in a way, however good for us, because they can only have made a certain amount of vases and plates and all sorts of different things in that time. So the market is not inundated with them. It's nicely marked on the base and there are collectors out there. And I think that's a pretty modern, funky looking piece in today's market. So it's over to you. Hawley's put two to 300 pounds on it as their estimate. You get 15 seconds to come up with your estimate starting now. <laughs> And we're back. Okay, estimated at two to three hundred pounds of this Linthorpe vase. What is your valuation? Well, I'm going to tell you that the hammer price was pretty bang on at three hundred and twenty pounds for the vase. I think that's good value for money. Don't forget the commission, 20 or 30 percent on top of that. But still, they're not making any more, are they? It's a proper antique and it's still modern and funky. So let me know how you're doing, make some comments. And let's move on to item number three. Very different this. How much do you think this is worth? I think you'll agree this is a bit different. It's a big lump of a Victorian painted dresser. It's nine feet long and let's say it dates to about 1860. So it was found by and sold by Philip Serrell Auctioneers in Worcester and it carried an estimate of two to four hundred pounds for this thing and it was in ropey condition. So what's your opinion? Is it too expensive? Is it too cheap? Well before you make your mind up let me give you a bit of background information here. So it was found in an outhouse, not a kitchen, an outhouse. It had been used as a workshop bench and it was stained with oil, not olive oil, but engine oil. And the auctioneers even said that there were holes in the back of it caused by vermin. Yes, vermin. So how ropey was this thing? It had been languishing in an outhouse for generations, but what's it worth now? You probably know by watching the antique shows that antique furniture is positively in the doldrums when it comes to price, but some things, I must warn you, do break the mold. So over to you, two to 400 pounds estimate. How much do you think this Victorian dresser actually sold for? Here's your 15 seconds thinking time starting now. Losing time and losing minds We cut complications from these blurry lines and die yeah, Just in time. There we go. And we are back. How did you do? I reckon you did really badly because this dresser did break the mould. Two to four hundred pounds estimate. It sold for two thousand. £200 plus 24% commission. Why? Because it's a big lump of an oddity. And I mean that in the nicest possible way. Obviously made for a great big country kitchen, probably a one-off. I've never seen the likes of it quite before. You won't ever see it again. And the market knew this. Obviously two buyers wanted it. And that's what it's made. So that's what it's worth. But imagine what it's going to look like restored, deverminized, cleaned up, waxed and oiled, sat in a big, posh, brand new, modern kitchen. That's going to look a million dollars. Right. Keep on letting me know in the comments how rubbish you're doing. Let's see if you can do any better with this. I'm going to take you now with item number four all the way to the Orient. How much do you think this is worth? Now, I don't know whether you've ever seen one of these before. It's 
quite an unusual thing to crop up in auction. This is a Second World War, so it's around 80 years old, Japanese soldier's good luck flag, the kind of thing he'd keep on his person. And it was put through Paul Laidlaw's auctioneers in Carlisle, and it carried an estimate of 100 to 200 pounds. So what's your instinct? What is your gut feeling? How much would you pay for that flag today? Well, before you decide, let me give you a bit of background information. So the good luck flags were exactly that. They were given to servicemen before they left on active service. So Japanese soldiers carried these things in their backpacks as good luck symbols. And they were often written on poems, messages from loved ones, family, work colleagues, neighbours, everybody got together, wrote out a little bit of poetry, something to make the soldier feel at home when he's far off in some distant land fighting. He'd also use it during prayer and it was also seen as a reminder to the soldier that who he was fighting for. He was fighting for the Japanese Empire and his people and so it was designed also to spur him on to do his duty. So quite an emotional thing. So that's the historic background. It's over to you. How much do you think it's worth? Here come your 15 seconds thinking time and then I will reveal the hammer price starting now. Then you can hear me. Okay, we're back. Now this is going to be interesting for me to see how you did. So the good luck flag estimated at one to two hundred pounds sold on the day. Bang on estimate, ninety pounds. Bottom estimate plus the commission gets you into the early hundreds of pounds. So not a great deal of money for something that it really does hold quite a lot of emotional attachment or rather did at one point. And the reason why this isn't worth a fortune is because of course there were hundreds of thousands of these good luck flags made. The more valuable ones would be the much more detailed ones with poetry and messages radiating out from that central symbol of the sun. They would represent the rays of the sun. Maybe some in-depth poetry or something dedicated to a very well-known general. Those things may well make several hundreds into their thousands and could be museum pieces, but you'd be surprised how many of these are actually out there. And of course, brought back with Allied soldiers after the Second World War. Right, love to know how you're doing. Now this is the fifth and final item in my first episode of my YouTube Vintage Antiques Game Show. And we're gonna go from Japan, from the Orient, we're gonna come back to Britain, and I'm gonna introduce you to a beautiful, glamorous lady. How much would you pay for this? And isn't she just absolutely lovely? This is an original, proper antique, 18th century oil painting of a lady on canvas mounted in a nice gilt frame. It's 250 years old or thereabouts. It went through Catherine Southern's auction in the UK and it carried an estimate of three to four hundred pounds for this lovely glamorous lady. Now, how do you feel about that? What's your gut feeling? What's your instinct? Is it worth that amount of money? Less, more? Where are you on this? Let's test your valuing skills. But before you do that, let me give you a bit of background information which will help you. So just because it's 250 years old doesn't make it worth a fortune. Age has got nothing to do with value in this business. And traditional pieces like this, traditional paintings, are not what they used to be. They used to be worth more money. The market is more into modern art than it is the traditional. However, she is much better than the majority of pieces from this period because the vast majority of portraits from the Georgian period 
featured old, ugly men. Who wants an old, ugly man on their wall? They don't. Having a young, beautiful lady is much rarer. Now, the problem here, though, is we don't know who she is. That would be so nice to know. We don't even know who painted her. There's no signature, no information at all. It's all lost in the mists of time, which is not unusual. So you've got to value this thing as a decorative painting, not as something special by a particular artist. That's what she is, a good decorator. So over to you. Take a close look. I'm going to give you 15 seconds. This is your last chance to redeem yourself if you've got everything wrong so far. 15 seconds to come up with an estimation starting now. No, Rosie, come back. We're, well, we're back. This is your last chance to perform. So the painting estimated at three to four hundred pounds sold at Catherine Southerns. I think predictably for more than that, it made six hundred pounds. Rightly so. She's just great. Don't forget you've got commission on top, 20 or 30 percent, depending on how you buy credit card online, that kind of thing. Anyway, that is it, the end of episode one of my YouTube Vintage Antiques Game Show. I'm, I'm going to be back every Sunday night, UK time, 6.30, well, for the next few weeks anyway. We'll see how it goes. I'm looking for feedback. Make some comments, make some suggestions. What kind of vintage and antique items would you like me to feature? Listen, thanks for tuning in from me. From Rosie, she's dashed off and fed up. Until next time, I'm David Harper. Cheerio. All right.